I think partly the right to buy program raised much more money in the early 80s than had been anticipated. Mm. And so there was never any prospect of, of the Treasury not getting their hands on that surplus. I think the second thing was that, you know, local authorities, not in all cases, but in many cases, were, were kind of the hubs of resistance to the Thatcherite program. And therefore, the very last thing that Thatcher and the Treasury and the Cabinet Office were going to do was to kind of sucker local authorities in any ways. The, the program was in, was in many respects about muzzling the local authorities. So that was another reason why the, the receipts were centralised to such a significant degree. And then I think the third thing was obviously you had deindustrialization of the UK, you had the you know, increase in unemployment by about 4 million. So, you know, the receipts from the council house uh, selling program, along with receipts from the North Sea oil, those were the two kind of key sources of income to pay the increased welfare budget in the early 1980s. So I think you put all those things together and you can see a pretty good, strong explanation for what happened with those council house receipts. Is it fair to say that a nation of shopkeepers became a nation of estate agents? Obviously not in its totality, but it's pretty obvious to anyone walking around the UK over the last 20 or 30 years that the real estate sector has become um, a massively more significant sector in economic terms over the last 30, 40 years in the UK. And actually, for all the talk that we hear about the financialization of the UK economy and it all becoming about financial services, if you look at the actual data for the, for the changes in the UK economy over the last 30 or 40 years, there's been more growth in terms of gross value added, so the contribution of different industries to economic output. There's been more growth in real estate than there has in finance over the last 40 years. Mm -hmm.